Hello and welcome to our newest message called The Fight of Your Life, Part 2. Now this is part of our Pop Culture and Pulpit series um, for the month of December. And I'm Dr. Dane T. Jones-Clark and this is Spilling the Tea with Dr. D. Um, I am founder and president of the Dignity and Direction Group. I'm also apostle for the House That Dignity Built Ministries. And if you'd like to um, access information for more of our courses or booklets, uh, feel free to visit www.dignityhall.myicourse.com. I want to um, um, especially thank our sponsors and our vendors. Um, if you are a lover of artwork, uh, feel free to reach out to Lolo at Blue Topaz. Also, if you um, would like to be exposed to resources for education, entrepreneurship, and employment, uh, reach out to us at the Dignity and Direction Group. Um, and also, we have an arm of the Dignity and Direction Group called the Dignity Players, a grown folks troop. Uh, we will be getting ready to launch some YouTube videos where we will be reading to children so they, they can be exposed to books um, online while they are at home. So be on the lookout for that. Um, also, if you like my jewelry today, um, I purchased it from one of the vendors who participated in our um, in two of our expos, um, the Enterprising Entrepreneurial Expo in 2019 and 2020. Um, her name is Eileen Barron, and her company is called Eileen's Alabaster Box. If you'd like to hear her talk more, about her company. You can visit the link on, on this screen or on this slide rather, and you can start at the time signature that I have listed there. She speaks for about four minutes about what inspired her to start the jewelry and to tell you a little about her company's culture. All right, and if you are interested in having um, a tea party for ladies of all ages, uh, small groups um, of no more than about 32 participants, um, drop us a note at First Lady Teas. Also, if you love fashion, especially vintage fashion, um, and you like to be able to feel that you have also helped out some children who are in need, you might want to visit Glamour Style Station at 5613 and one and a half Almeda Street. They have some beautiful clothes. And um, throughout this series, I have been wearing many of their um, outfits as well. Uh, today's outfit is not from them. Um, however, if you go back and look at some of our previous videos, you will see many of their fashions. So our objective for today is to look at Luke 8 um, so that um, I can speak about a fight strategy against storms and against demons. So let's get started, all right? The fight of your life, part two. As we look at Luke 8, we're going to look at scriptures 22 through 30. And if you were to summarize these scriptures, you would see that God is suggesting that you make a plan, that you recognize a storm, that you speak to the storm, that you make your move, recognize the true enemy, and then name it. And we're using um, episode one from the fight of the century, called the fight of the century, um, from the Netflix series starring um, Octavia Spencer called Self Made. So 
Luke 8 and 22 reads, One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. Let's look at how um, self-made's character, um, Madam C.J. Walker, makes a plan. So her character plans to open a hair salon and to sell her own line of products. Recognize a storm. Luke 8 and 23 reads, as they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. So the way that Madam C.J. Walker recognizes a storm is her house burns down and then her antagonist, Patty Monroe, moves all the way to her new town, to Madam C.J. Walker's new town. Um, and then when she's there, she tries to poach um, uh, Madam C.J. Walker's customers right at the site where um, the house had burned down. Oh, that's something else, isn't it? That's a storm. So you have the power to speak to a storm. Luke 8 and 24 reads, the disciples went and woke him saying, master, master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters, the storm subsided, and all was calm. And if you look at Mark 4 and 39, what Jesus said when he rebuked the waters and the storm, he said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. So, See, Madam C.J. Walker says to her competitor and her antagonist, you had your foot on my throat for years, told me I was worthless, useless, and too dark to shine. But the mere inkling that I might be doing well made you move over a thousand miles clear across country just to dim my light. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? When, you're, when your competitor, your antagonist follows you, follows you. Sometimes you can't run. Sometimes you've got to make a stand. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to speak to some storms. Now, in addition, you want to make your move. Luke 8, 26 reads, They sailed to the region of Gerasenes which is across the lake from Galilee. So you see, Jesus moved from the water and from one land to another. He made a move. So the move that Madam C.J. Walker made was after her house burned down, she decided to open a factory. Now the next phase is um, from that scripture is to recognize who the true enemy is. Who's the true enemy? Luke 8, 27 reads, when Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. You see why that text says demon-possessed man? The man wasn't the enemy. The demon who possessed the man was the enemy. That's who the enemy was. So who's the true enemy of Madam C.J. Walker? Patty isn't the real enemy. Um, as you note, when she returns to town or she follows Madam C.J. Walker all the way there, you'll see she has a black eye. She's not the real enemy. Her pain 
and what she allowed to enter her is. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So do you see, Addy as the antagonist isn't the real enemy. The spirit that sits upon her because she has pain is. So name it. What's that spirit's name? Luke 8 and 30 says, Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. See, you have to know what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, so you know how to deal with it. Name it. So speaking of names, when Madam C.J. Walker is speaking to Addie Monroe and the bottom of the scene, when after her house is burned down, she, she says to Addie, no, 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 you want to speak to me? You call me Madam C.J. Walker. See, before she was calling her Sarah Breedlove, but Madam C.J. Walker realized it was more important at this point to call herself by her husband's name, to give herself a covering uh, that that marriage was supposed to provide for her. And then Addie says, you'll fail soon enough. And when you do, I've got a hamper of dirty laundry with your name on it. <laughs> now, if you look at that statement, when Addie was trying to be messy, if you look at that statement, you will be able to see what spirit is represented in Addie's speech. It's the Leviathan spirit. It is a sea serpent. Um, and if you go to the Bible and look in different books of the Bible, um, and I pray to do a series just on this spirit alone, so we can delve into that more, you could see evidence that Addie is affected by the Leviathan spirit. It's a spirit of pride. She did not want a CJ Walk, Madam C.J. Walker to become her competitor. She didn't even want her to work for her. She just wanted her to do her laundry. <laughs> but that spirit of pride did not hold Madam C.J. Walker back. Um, this spirit also will try to get into your mind. Um, and you saw that Madam C.J. Walker had to take a moment um, in the ladies' room of her church. She had to take a moment to center herself. She had to take a moment to get feelings of inadequacy out of her mind. Uh, she had to return um, away from a victim mindset to a victorious mindset um, because the Leviathan spirit can try to get into one's mind. Also, it tries to block your goals. So you see, she was already trying to have a business from her home. So her home was burned down by her um, son-in-law who loved a fire, um, left chemicals on fire. The Leviathan spirit blocks goals, and it can try to make a person feel hopeless. But I'm so glad that Madam C.J. Walker, the first known female millionaire in America, did not give up, regardless of if she had moments of feeling hopeless, regardless of if she her goals were being blocked, regardless of if other people's pride got in the way, she kept persisting. She continued to persist. And I hope that that's what you're doing as well in your life. So name it. Name it. Let's work. Let's talk about that some more. Um, Madam C.J. Walker said, I got to find a way to set myself apart. What she's talking about here is being able to deal with direct competition with her business. So here are some notes from an article called Five Effective Ways to Beat Your Competition. What you want to do is you want to find and solve your customer's pain points. And this is why they would even want your services. 
in, in the first place, right? You want to help solve their financial or their process or their productivity or their support pain points. You, you want to answer their prayers about something that's getting on their nerves or something they need solved, okay? You want to also find a niche um, for your company in the market, and you want to tell your story, and you want to specialize. And that's what Madam C.J. Walker did. She told her story about when her hair fell out, and then she offered her products as a way to specialize for women of color who wanted a certain look for their own hair. Then you want to set competitive pricing, and to be able to do that, you have to know what others who sell the same kind of products are pricing their products. And then when you know who your clientele is, you know what you can, you know what you can charge. Um, so set competitive pricing so that you can be able to appeal to your audience. And then change your business to stay ahead of your competition. As you'll see from the episode, um, Madam C.J. Walker read books. That was so that she could always know what was going on in the marketplace and be ahead of the competition. So why would this message about having a fight strategy um, be important to you? How would it be helpful? Well, ask yourself these questions. Are you dealing with a competitor who introduces division and doubt? Is that happening in your life right now? Are you dealing with any pain points? Did you ask God to reveal the answer to you? Did you speak to and name the real enemy when you were dealing with this? Are you making plans on how to deal with it? Are you making plans on how to further yourself in the kingdom? Are you making plans about your purpose in this lifetime? Make some plans. And did you make a move? You see how Jesus moved. He made a move. And that move was about territory. He saved that man's life who had been possessed by legion. And lastly, do you believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Have you accepted Christ into your life? Oh, it's a redeeming moment. It's a moment that you will always cherish, to know that you are protected by a God who is all-powerful and all-knowing so that you don't have to do all of this and fight these battles by yourself. Oh, I pray that you have accepted him into your life. Here is a prayer for you and for me. Father God, I love you for who you are. I respect your order and power. I pray that you help us to rebuke, to name, to move, to plan, and to speak based upon your direction. I speak victory over us because you give me the power to do so. Please continue to cover us with your grace. May we rebuke storms and demons. I pray this prayer. Through Jesus, your precious son's name, amen. If you have any questions about this presentation, feel free to um, send me a message via our contact page at www.dignitieshouse.org. And if you have a church of your own and you want to use this message and Maybe you're not sure where it could be of use. If you have an entrepreneurial ministry or maybe a Sunday school um, that deals with um, having lessons about how to fight the good fight, the good fight of our lives, I'll consider using it for those ministries. And here's a page of some other resources um, if you are interested in learning more about the fight 
of your life. I'm Dr. Dainty Jones Clark, and this has been Spilling the Tea with Dr. D. I pray that you are blessed today, tomorrow, and always. Amen.